Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 40. DNA replication is conservative and discontinuous, semi-conservative and semi-discontinuous, semi-conservative and discontinuous, conservative. So by now all of us know that DNA replication, the process of DNA replication is semi-conservative and semi-discontinuous. So if you again want to have a look at the entire process of DNA replication, you can refer the videos in detail on DNA replication from the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance of class 12th Biology, where we have discussed in detail that how DNA replication is semi-conservative, how DNA replication is semi-discontinuous. So semi-discontinuous, just to give a quick recap, when you look at the way replication of DNA happens in the lagging strand and the leading strand, you see that in one of the strands it's continuous, the other strand it's discontinuous and that's how we call it a semi-discontinuous replication. Question number 41. Gene and cistron words are sometimes used synonymously because one cistron contains many genes, one gene contains many cistrons, one gene contains one cistron, one gene contains no cistron. So cistron, if, if you uh, literally look at the definition of a cistron, so cistron is a section of DNA or RNA that codes for a specific polypeptide in protein synthesis. So cistron is a section of DNA. And what is a section of DNA? A section of DNA is also a gene. So basically, cistron and gene are synonyms. I mean, it, it's the same because a, one section of DNA is a cistron. A particular section of DNA is again a gene. So one gene contains one cistron. Question number 42. The following ratio is generally constant for a given species. Now, as we all know by now that as per the base pairing rule, Percentage of adenine is always equal to percentage of thiamine. Similarly, percentage of guatin is always equal to the percentage of cytosine. So this is something which is known to us by the base pairing rule. So if you consider any particular species, what is that ratio which will always remain constant? So that ratio is A plus T divided by G plus C. So this ratio always remains constant because A and T they pair up together, G and C they pair up together and also their respective percentages are the same. But when you divide them, the ratio that you get that is constant for one particular species. Now it ideally should be 1 but it is not really 1 for all of them. It varies in the range of 0 0.4 to 1.9. So in this case which is the right option? G plus C divided by A plus T. C, A plus T. So it is as good as if I say that the ratio 1 by 2 remains constant for all of them. So it is as good as saying that the ratio 2 by 1 remains constant for all of them. So because we are not talking about the numbers in, in, as individuals, we are talking about the ratio. Question 43. One gene, one enzyme hypothesis was postulated by... So this was postulated by Beadle and Tatum and one gene, one enzyme hypothesis stated that each gene produces a single enzyme. One gene produces one enzyme which affects an individual step in the metabolic pathway. So that was one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. Now besides that you also have a couple of other scientists name here like Hershey and Chase. So I'm sure all of you remember Hershey and Chase experiment which clearly proved that DNA is the genetic material. When you talk about R. Franklin, he is, he is a famous X-ray crystallographer and he is known for his contribution to understand the molecular structure of DNA. If you talk about A. Garrod, A. Garrod is known for uh, the black bone disease or the black urine disease uh, which is a very rare inherited genetic disorder. So he is known for his findings of that black urine disease. So here for this question, Beadle and Tatum who gave the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. Question number 44. What does LAC refer to in what we call the LAC operon? So LAC in LAC operon is nothing but lactose. 
so as you as we have all learned in detail about the lac operon again in you can refer the videos of class 12 biology molecular basis of inheritance so there we have de we have had a detailed explanation of the lac operon so what does this lac operon do so here the regulation of the gene which codes for three enzymes which are involved in the lactose fermentation so since it is for lactose fermentation so from the word lactose it has been shortened to lac so we call it lac operon Question number 45. Removal of RNA polymerase 3 from nucleoplasm will affect the synthesis of tRNA, hnRNA, mRNA or rRNA. So when you remove RNA polymerase 3 from the nucleoplasm, this will affect the synthesis of tRNA or the transport RNA. So again, as I mentioned before also for detailed explanations of these topics because these are all lengthy topics. So if you really want to understand the exact stepwise synthesis of RNA from DNA and then synthesis of proteins according to the RNA sequence, please refer class 12th biology videos of molecular inheritance. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.